Great, thanks a lot. So my name's Kathy Perkins. I direct the FET Interactive Simulations Project. And I just wanted to comment that um, in Joy's uh, talk this morning, um, he mentioned this too long, didn't read comment by students and, and emphasized play. And so hopefully this kind of project is uh, resonating with him and others that have this reaction, including our students. So um, FET, the FET project basically focuses on one main mission, which is to advance science and literacy, science and math literacy and education worldwide. And we do that by marrying advances in how people learn with advances in education technology to create interactive simulations that provide powerful new tools for teaching and learning science. So far we have over 115 simulations and growing, mostly in physics and chemistry with some efforts in math, biology, and earth science. We have over 700 teacher contributed lessons around these simulations. We conduct research on simulation design and use, and we support translation. So the simulations have been translated into 67 languages and the website into 25 languages. Uh, this is our usage curve. Uh, so right now we're at 25 million simulations run per year and growing. Uh, we see usage across all 50 states and 200 countries and territories, and we expect a growth rate of about 65% for 2012. Uh, and the simulations predominantly used during school hours um, from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, so one of the requests for this presentation was um, to identify learners, facilitators, and builders uh, of our project. So um, the learners are elementary students, middle school students, um, and college students. We also, uh, the simulations are also used by pre-service and in-service teachers, both in terms of developing their content learning around STEM and in terms of developing their pedagogical approaches. Um, and we aim to uh, address learners worldwide. Um, we also support a variety of where students are learning, so in class, in lab, at home, both with homeschooling environments and homework, um, online, both uh, traditional classrooms online or blended environments or online learning. Uh, and informal environments, and we want to do that both in places where um, you have uh, internet and you don't have internet. Um, the simulations are designed to be these flexible tools. The, the goal is to provide an in environment where students can learn through discovery and inquiry and play, but um, they are flexible so teachers can integrate them in a whole variety of ways. So we have teachers integrating them um, in the most uh, traditional senses up to the most innovative senses. And in this way, we kind of view the simulations as a soft entry point for education reform. They provide a lot of teacher choice, and they provide us access to teachers who are teaching in traditional methods. So one of the things we're kind of looking towards is how can we use that access to help advance um, teacher pedagogy uh, in general. Uh, so to support all this, the, one of the uh, main ideas behind the simulations is that they have to be both flexible and accessible. The builders are the FET team, uh, so that combines faculty, postdocs, teachers, developers. Uh, the lesson builders are the teachers, so that's, um, we have a lot of teachers around the world building lessons and we provide opportunities for them to contribute and share that up through our website. Uh, the facilitators are of course our funders our translators, our um, licensing and legal uh, support, um, collectors and distributors, um, third party users, both commercial and OER providers, um, and then of course our teachers who bring the simulations to the users. So in terms of quality, uh, a real focus for FET is on providing high quality tools. Um, and this is, is just a really uh, key focus for our project. So that requires funding. We really base our tools in research on how people learn on multimedia design, on, on student difficulties around the content and content learning. We um, pull in expertise from education, content teaching, and software development. Uh, and we do a really um, tight iteration on testing. Every simulation is, is tested with students through student interviews and feeds back into the design until it's reaching all of our goals. Um, now this is a place where, what one of the questions in my mind is, is 
is where do you open things up and bring in lots of people to build, and where do you decide we're going to build it because we want to maintain the control and, uh, over that quality. So, so in our project, this is a place where we maintain the control and we provide a really high quality tool, and that's, um, that's what we're trying to, to do. Um, but where we uh, kind of open it up and, 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 and provide a lot of flexibility is in its use. So um, we also uh, create activities and study use and pull from the research on how people learn and what we learn from interviews and we pull in different expertise and we conduct research. But, um, but the use is, is, um, is a much more complex uh, scenario, right? Each teacher is in, its, in their own context. They have their own structural barriers. They have their own students. Um, and they have to be able to use this tool um, in a way that works in their environment. So we need to um, pull in the teachers, teach them about what we learn about simulation use, but also rely on them to, to um, contribute to the innovation, innovations in how simulations can be used. Um, now we see a lot of use from, the, like I said, from the most traditional to the most innovative um, uses for the sims. Uh, supportive policies, uh, the OER requirements by grant makers, the Creative Commons licensing support. Um, obviously calls for funding in STEM learning is one um, policy that really helps us keep us going, keep us supported. Um, the Common Core standards have provided a really uh, great opportunity. They provide targeted learning goals for us that really get into the, um, that focus more on these deeper learning issues that we really are trying to address with the simulations. Um, and they provide new opportunities for getting new materials into curriculum. Uh, the tech standards, I would say, are a challenge for us. Uh, we go, we, um, our goals are cross-platform use and cross-technology communication, and we were doing okay on those goals until the tablets came out. Um, so now we have to use more standards and we need um, more resources to adapt to these standards, so it, it's kind of a moving target that's causing uh, difficulty for us. Um, what do we choose for iPads, for Androids? HTML5 is really immature. Anyway, if anybody has suggestions on that, I would love to hear it. Um, and then also looking towards the assessments as a, as a driving focus, the simulations could be, um, uh, could provide new opportunities for assessment, and to do that we have to look at the usage data coming out of the simulations and there isn't really a standard for exchanging that sort of format of data. Uh, influential research, this is the research that we have used and moving forward, focusing on um, teacher professional development, developing learning communities, how do we um, help teachers use simulations effectively in the classroom. Um, these are the kind of um, research areas that we're gonna have to um, uh, use more in the future. Uh, in terms of um, kind of reflecting on what makes innovative OER, I think um, you really need to start with a, a need. Science really had a need for new tools to learn science, so it was really a great opportunity for something like FET. Um, we had funding. You, if you um, underlie it with relevant research and pull that in and inform your um, your tool development by that, and then integrate this testing and iteration. I can't tell you how much we have learned by having a tight feedback loop on that, and then we've been able to publish that and share that with the broader community of simulation developers. And that, and doing this process, I really feel like you can go beyond what's available commercially, and I think if OER is gonna be um, taken up in broad numbers, that's what we're going to have to do, like the products that OER delivers, um, it, 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 one of the things we should strive for is exceeding what, um, what the commercial industry would naturally produce. Um, a couple challenges I'll leave you for uh, with respect to my project are um, models of sustainability and then how to educate and leverage um, the great number of teachers that we have using the simulations. Thank you. So again, we have uh, time for discussion and questions. This microphone is coming, just a second. Hi, can you say a little more about the challenge of sustainability? Because that, I think, is a big issue that we haven't really discussed in the last day and a half. 
Thank so you. Um, for our project right now, it's a um, it's over a million dollars a year budget uh, for our project, and we have a lot more work to do. There's a lot more simulations, and and essentially the co commercial industry doesn't doesn't invest the kind of resources or produce the products that we produce. So we feel there's a, a big need for that. Um, so so far we've been mostly grant funded, uh, and grant funding doesn't last um, forever. So we're looking for models. One of um, one thing I'm kind of floating around here is a model of having uh, kind of named simulations. As the simulation usage has gone up, some simulations are used over a million times per year. Can we attract um, industries that want a feel-good opportunity like Dow Chemical or TI or Intel to, um, to make an annual donation and get their name on the simulation in a way that doesn't interfere, interfere with the use? So it just come up for four seconds and then disappear. So, so that's one of the models that we're looking at. And we, with a growing number of simulations and a growing amount of use, we, if that annual donation model works, then that would be a sustainable model for us. Um, we've tried individual donations, and I can tell you that doesn't work. <laughs> like teachers, you know, we get some teachers. Interestingly, we get, with that individual donation, um, at least 50% of our donations come from outside the US, like from Italy and South America. Like these teachers giving 10 and $20, it's, it's, you know, it's amazing that the US teachers don't do it compared to the, to the um, international teachers. Uh, hi. Um, thank you for the presentation. And um, I'd like to first say before my question that uh, FET is perhaps the best um, OER resource I've seen in terms of uh, organizing materials and focus so that when you're looking for courseware or you're looking for materials associated with a particular topic, I, I don't think there's anything out there better than FET right now. Thanks. And um, I don't think it gets the credit it deserves at all. So, so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, and then my, my question is, you, you do get a fair number of submissions on almost all of your um, simulations, it seems. And I was wondering if you have worked to embrace those uh, educators that are submitting, as well as those who are translating and so forth, to see if um, you could work with them to do more in terms of, say, even just reviewing uh, entries that come in or other ways to sort of build a community around those those builders and practitioners, and if you're working in that direction. Yeah, we um, we definitely want to work on on um, community building. We haven't, I, I should say, we haven't done that much with the the submitters so far. We do have a person on our team who reviews the submissions, um, but uh, but that idea of communi community building is one that we really want to to work on and, and, and the idea of starting with the submitters is a great place. Um, and the talk on the peer-to-peer -peer U um, seems like also a, a nice platform that we could try in terms of building that user community. We've um, created Facebook and, web and, and blogs and stuff like that to try to increase the number of teachers to the point where we felt like uh, we could actually have an active discussion. It seems like, I don't know, if there's research on this, somebody please share it with me, but like, at what level does your community that you actually are in touch with need to be in order to start having useful conversations? Um, I don't know the answer to that. So we, we kind of started with that social network thing, thing trying to reach out to the teachers and, and create a connection with them. Um, and then we're gonna try to move into more of a community discussion, but the, the idea of starting with the submitters is a great idea. Okay. Thanks. I also have a question. For uh -huh. you. Um, you mentioned a couple of times that you looked into research about learning and learning patterns. Can you tell us a little bit more what the key, you know, design principles are that, that you distilled from from that research and how it influenced uh, what you what you offer now? Um, well. So some key principles from that are uh, 
essentially, um, a lot of it's summarized in the book, How People Learn. So uh, that learning is an active process, that you need to engage in that, that you can build on prior learning. So some of the ways that we um, build that into the simulations is uh, we make connections to um, things that people know, like we use a, a bicycle pump for injecting gas molecules, and we use buckets to cue people for pulling out things where they can like actively engage in it and accuse that interaction. Um, we look at the research around specific content learning, like that um, students uh, often um, think that elect uh, current is used up as electrons go around the circuit, and we kind of um, take that idea and we build uh, visualizations and resources into the simulation that allow students to confront that misunderstanding and directly kind of address it by, by showing the electrons that they're not disappearing as they go around. So we kind of pull from a lot of different areas. Um, cognitive load theory, we do a lot of scaffolding with the simulations. Um, Thank you. Thanks yeah. so much.